Um, my name is Sebastian Rose. Uh, I am the director of R&D um, for Mitrichem. Uh, just to give you a little bit about my background, I have been working in the five chemical industry for the last uh, 16 years. Uh, my previous position was the chemical process R&D director for Cephalon, a US biopharmaceutical company. And I used to, um, in fact, direct the, um, the activities starting the process development for late uh, medicinal chemistry, the candidate nomination, and making all the process development of, um, of these candidates up to the uh, manufacturing activities. Um, and this was just before uh, joining Mitrichem. So Mitrichem, Mitrichem sorry, is, um, is a young French company with um, uh, the aim to develop some new uh, generic APIs. And um, you may think that it's quite challenging to establish such activity in France due to competition. And to some extent, it's indeed, it's indeed a challenge. Um, developing generic APIs is often uh, driven by cost reduction. However, uh, cost is only p a part of the, of the equation. And um, that may limit some companies to uh, just copy the original processes from the Princeps uh, companies and as some limitation. Another consideration is to search for uh, new innovative processes which will give you some um, uh, the potential of having some new intellectual properties. And when you combine the delivery of high quality products uh, with innovation and new patent, that can bring you um, a good position on the market and a good com competitivity. So that's on this aspect that Midrichem defined itself as a conceptor, conceptor d'API, which means um, uh, combining innovation and high quality of product when making the development of API for our own or for our, cust our customers. So let's speak about a little more about Mitrichem. So as I say, Mitrichem was created quite recently, one year ago, but uh, this creation was due to the acquisition of the previous Cephalon Mitri site, um, which, is, which relies on a state-of-the-art manufacturing complex where two main activities are handled which is the manufacturing of APIs, as well as the chemical research and development center. So we are developing at the moment our own generic uh, API portfolio, but we also offer our expertise to uh, external, external customers. And really the mission we have is to produce high quality ingredients for our customers and be compliant, of course, with all the EHNS environment. Okay. Um, even if we have a young company, we can rely on a strong expertise due to our historical background. In fact, the site was created in uh, 1981. Uh, it was a manufacturing site for a French pharmaceutical company, family owned, uh, which was called Lafont Laboratory. And during 20 years, we manufactured the API for this, this company. In um, early 2001, uh, Cephalon, the biopharmaceutical company, which was one of our customers, decided to acquire a site. And um, following this acquisition, um, Cephalon decided to invest a lot on the site. And that's why in 2005, we have the inauguration of a new manufacturing unit, which is really fully automated, state of the art, fully compliant with all GMP uh, standards. So we have worked for Cephalon up to 2011, when Cephalon decided to uh, separate itself from the chemical manufacturing activities. And there was a spin-off, which gave birth to Laboratoire Mitrimory, which was our first name. But Laboratoire Mitrimory has a, a sound about drug product, which was not really our expertise. So two weeks ago, we decided to change the name, and we became Mitrichem. Uh, which is much more in relation with our chemical expertise of API, R&D, and, and manufacturing. And our new shareholders decided to uh, invest also a lot on the R&D capabilities because they think that R&D is really a factor of growth for our company. 
So there was an investment of additional R&D capabilities, as well as a new GMP killer lab, which will enable us to produce uh, GMP material at the uh, 100 gram scales, roughly. Uh, currently, the R&D staff is about one third of the global staff on the site. Okay. Um, we benefit from an, a good track record of quality on the site. We have been inspected by the FDA and the AFSAPs over the, the, the last years. Um, and uh, all the inspection went well. We didn't have any major remark, nor any form uh, 483. And so this standard of quality is continuously maintained and reviewed to continuously adapt the best quality compliance and, and, and to afford this quality level to our customers. Okay, looking at our expertise. Our expertise really starts from the early process research steps up to the industrial production, which will include, in fact, all the paper route, desi paper route design and selection of synthesis pathways, the early process research, individual step optimization, then going into full process development, and then going to scale up in killer lab, pilot plants, and manufacturing. So let's, let's see a bit more in detail about what it consists in. At each step, we try to be as much as innovative as we can. And innovation starts first with brains. That's why when uh, looking for new potential synthesis, we have some brainstorming, st brainstorming station, station, sorry, with our PhDs, trying to identify all of the potential routes we could apply to, um, to produce a, 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 a candidate. And once we have identified such routes, the next step is really to classify the routes, depending on several, uh, on several options. Uh, you, could fo you could focus on the fast sc scalability of this route, which is to say being able to implement this route as fast as possible for a customer. Um, you could also look at the breakthrough that this route could afford you and be able to develop new IP for such synthesis. Or you could also uh, look at the route if you need only just to consider IP protection. That is to say if you have a, already a dominant patent on the market and you want to find some alternative routes to protect yourself from, from competition. So that's something which can also be cons considered. Okay. Once the route is selected and identified and selected, we have to demonstrate its, re its real potential. So that's what we're going to do at bench scale in the early steps. And here the strategy is really to access the targeted compound with a route which gives you all the potential for, scal for scalability. So we're going to perform first and last training of condition for critical steps and also start delivering multigram representative batches. Once this is done, we need to involve more deeply in the understanding on the, syn on the synthesis. So we are looking at each individual step and try to optimize, get the most efficiency of each reaction uh, within the process, which consists of identifying and suppressing the bottlenecks which could be um, uh, in, in inherent to each specific step really analyze and understand in depth uh, the conditions of the reactions. And to do that, we will rely on design of experiment methodology, like surface resp response um, uh, methodology, and process analytical tools, which will give you some in-depth understanding of what's going on I in the reaction. Once you know that, you can really fine tune the reaction parameters to get most efficiency on the yield, on the quality, and sometimes also on the safety of the process. At the end of this, of this um, process, we will also perform some small scale demonstration for each, each, process, each synthetic step. So. The associated capabilities we can offer to, to, to perform such, um, such study is based, as I said, on software for design of experiments, but also uh, some automated lab reactors we can study and, and, and understand the, the, the reactions by using multiple uh, parallel reactors automated, 
which gives you fast screening of condition. You can variate each parameter at a time, or you can make some statistic variation, building your, your uh, DOE methodology and understand the, understand the process. Another important part is really the process identical technologies that we, we could use. We are using the React IR probe uh, to um, get access to some kinetics data. React IR is like a, an eye you can, you can have in your actions, monitoring the disappearance of a characteristic IR band of your uh, reagents and looking at the appearance of, uh, of the React IR bands of, of your compound, for example. Some of the tools are the FBRM, which is like um, which is a probe which allows you to monitor the particle size distribution of your product when performing some crystallization. Then you can control really the, the crystallization condition, that's to say saying primary uh, nucleation, secondary nucleation, growth of crystals, and defining the particle size distribution of your product depending on the specification you want, uh, you want at the end. Another tool is the PVM, Particle Vision Microscope, which gives you some pictures of the morphology of your crystals. Will it be needles, spheric particles, cubic particles, whatever. Um, and you can, you can monitor um, the, you can control the, the, the formation of such particles, which could be um, a key factor when you, st when you uh, think about filtrability conditions of your crystals. For some specific studies, we, we, were, um, we had to use Raman probes also, which was quite specific, monitoring the formation of different polymorph form in your actions and defining the condition to get access to the right polymorph you want. So this is what's quite specific for one particular study. We can also rely on some other specific synthetic tools like photochemical, photochemical reactors continuous flow system or ozonalizer as well, that we have at your disposal. However, having you know the best synthetic process doesn't mean you have the best, the best process. You have to consider some other parameters to be sure that your reaction will be scalable and that you will uh, anticipate any scale-up constraints. And you have, for example, to consider the best physical operation you have to put in place, avoid um, large volume reaction, uh, you know, um, evaporation to dryness, chromatographic operation when you want to scale up, which is very costly, but you will much more rely on crystallization, simple distillation, a solvent exchange, this, this kind of, of conditions. Also, you have to consider engineering topics like mixing, uh, which can have uh, high influence, for example, in biphasic reaction systems, e or heat transfer, which is some, but not exhaustive list, of, of topics you have to consider. Of course, you will have also to consider costs and try as much to improve your cost efficiency of your process, which could be, for example, minimizing the number of solvent you will use or the volume of solvent you will use when developing a process, but also minimizing the number of physical steps. And as much as you can, if you can telescope some of the individual steps in a single one, that will bring you some, some cost reduction. When making process development, we also consider in parallel all the regulatory requirements. That is to say, uh, we will um, work with quality by design approach, uh, identifying the critical process parameters, critical quality attributes, but any influence of operation parameters you, can have, you could have on your final product. Also, we have a close look at the stream and characterization of impurities, which is really a challenge now in the regulatory dossier. Uh, validation, development and validation of ethical methods, for sure, for raw materials, intermediate or API, something that we are uh, developing uh, each time. Anticipating any genotoxic uh, uh, impurity uh, that you could have in your final products, which is something which is closely looked by the regulatory agency at the moment. Quantitation of residual solvent, which is something you know, uh, certainly, anyway. You need to be sure that the process you develop and you will scale up give you all the conditions for safety. To do that, we're performing some thermal hazard evaluation uh, through a specific calorimeter, like the RC1 calorimeter from Metler, but also some other tools. 
making a classification of each step with a Stossel uh, scale. Uh, so that will give you um, uh, the assurance uh, that there will be no runaway or no explosion or no thermal hazard associated with your reaction in, in, in your process. Uh, we also consider all environmental aspects like treatment of waste, but also the toxicity of reagents are going to be used in your reactions, and we try as much as possible to avoid high toxic uh, chemicals. A and we will also consider the staff exposure to such chemical reagents. Okay. The last one is also looking at the materials compatibility to be sure when you transfer a reaction from one reactor to the other one, there's no decomposition phenomena that could occur with your, um, your suspension or your, your solution reacting with uh, the, the stainless, steel, stainless steel of your pipes or, or, or such things like that. Last but not least, uh, the solid state studies. It's really critical that you need to have a look and characterize the physical form of your final API. Um, we will prefer solid and crystalli crystalline forms rather than liquid of amorphous states, for sure. And to do that, we'll make some large screening to define the crystallization condition and the solid state properties of your API. Um, we will characterize uh, such, such properties and look, for example, if your product is anhydrous, hydrate or solvate form. Uh, we will uh, perform so some studies to define if there's a salt which could give you the best efficiency of your API. Um, we will also consider polymorphism, which is a key aspect in terms also of intellectual properties when developing an API. And for bioavailability bio consideration, we will look also at the particle size distributions. So that's why like some patch tools like the FBRM are quite important for us in the development. Once the process is locked and fully developed, well, it's time to really assess the scale up and go to further scale. So uh, we will deliver some materials with uh, a reliable quality for our customers, which will allow the customers to perform early talk studies, the first formulation development also, and any clinical studies. Uh, as I told you, we have some um, uh, CGMP killer lab and pilot plant uh, CGMP also, uh, which were used in the past to uh, produce all the clinical batches for cephalon for phase one and phase two. The scale up will also give you the possibility to, um, to, to confirm some regulatory information for the filing, uh, process data first, but also confirm the specification of your API, of course, but also of the intermediates and of the raw materials, which is something which is really of high consideration in a, in a, file, in a, in a filing. Um, give you, giving you also some materials to perform the stability studies for DMF filing, and confirm, confirming also the physical form of your fi final API, API. To do that, uh, we will perform the scale up in a GMP environment most of the time. As I said, we have a new kilo lab at our disposal with reactors ranging from 10 to 30 liters reactors. A pilot plant, uh, which will range from 100 to 430 liters. So that means a scale about five kilo to 25 kilo, which is very useful for the clinical phase delivery. And fortunately, we'll go to the final scale, which is the manufacturing scale with two GMP production units. Um, with some reactor size ranging about 2,500 2, liters. So not large volumes, but giving you some, some quantity and enough quantity to, to, uh, to get uh, reliable materials. Okay. Whatever the on the scale up, uh, all the plants have a flexible design to adapt themselves to the, to the process. And you have a high, automate, high automation level. Uh, the pilot plant, the GMP production buildings are fully automated with uh, Emerson Delta V system, which is CFR uh, 21 part uh, 11 compliant, fully compliant. We also decided to sign a partnership with another French company called Novalix to reinforce uh, the early or offer for the early stages. 
Okay? That means uh, Noalix could uh, give us additional and complementary capabilities for paperwork design, process research, individual step optimization, but also some capabilities in early steps as in drug discovery and, and medicinal chemistry. As I said, the, orga the additional capabilities are also um, could be seen in two ways. Additional staff, that is to say we have access also to a pool of organic chemists, PhD, which is really expert in organic synthesis, and with, um, with whom we can make some additional brainstorming station, sessions for creativity purpose. Uh, but they also have some complementary technologies that we don't have on our side, like solid phase synthesis, uh, microwave chemistry, continuous flow hydrogenation, and they also as us uh, uh, have some multiple parallel reactors for fast and large screening. So on the early stage, we, we have also this, uh, this complementarity. Uh, another key technology that Novalix brings us is the um, NMR capabilities. They are very well equipped with different NMR apparatus, with different probes that they, they could look at. And I would like also to emphasize this on the solid state NMR that they, they are in the domain where they are experts and they could use for polymorphism study also. LCMS and GCMS for fine mixture analysis is another tool. So overall, we think that we are at our disposal and we could afford to our customers all key ingredients for the development of a reliable process. We should be by, based on organic synthesis, anti cold development, EHNS consideration, crystallization, solid state, quality, or engineering. 